Hey guys, my name is Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. Create a lot of content for MSPs. And in today's video, it's part of a little mini series I've created here for Microsoft Defender Advanced Threat Protection. In the previous video, we did a demo on the EDR capabilities. And if you think about it, those are your more reactive capabilities within this particular management platform. And today we're gonna to be focusing on the TVM capabilities, so threat and vulnerability management. When you think about roles in your organization of the people who would work out of the EDR dashboard versus the TVM dashboard, this is really a security administrator who's triaging certain events and doing proactive work within the tenant to detect weaknesses, to detect anomalies, to then delegate the task off to IT administrators in the case of a software update or some type of patch in the Windows 10 software itself or certain software that's been deployed from third parties that, is, that has been identified has a weakness or known CVE associated with it. And then the EDR capabilities are done by a second analyst or somebody who's triaging the events after they've occurred in a reactive state to then go and, and handle that. So the capabilities I'm gonna demo out for to you today is the threat and vulnerability management dashboard plus the visibility that you see and how you can ingest this information and assign it to different people within your particular organization. So this is the main dashboard here I got here by coming into the dashboard section. There's a couple of things that you'll see as far as the tiles here that you can consume. The first of which is your exposure score. This is taking certain things within your tenant such as active alerts that we identified before previously in the other video as far as the EDR capabilities. It's also taking known vulnerabilities from software or active devices with certain security recommendations that haven't been remediated yet, which we'll get into here as well too, and then giving you a score based off of that. So obviously here, the lower the score, the better. And by addressing some of the alerts, resolving some of the alerts, installing the software updates for the uh, inventory that you have, is going to go ahead and, and lower this over time. So you want to keep a consistent way of, of maintaining this at a, at a lower exposure score in your tenants that you're managing. The Microsoft Secure Score for the devices you can see here as well too. You can click into these which will bring you into security recommendations based off of the top level category such as application or OS or something like that. And we'll get into that here as well too. But uh, I want to continue with the other types of tiles here that we have. Exposure distribution, um, these are the ones that have uh, devices with uh, medium exposure category. Um, these are low and you can see down here the categorization. But if you have anything with high, that means there's some severe security controls that need to be remedied immediately due to known CVEs or alerts or malware that's on the device themselves. So you get a stratification here. If you were to click on this, it would take you to the device page. Next here, we have the top events section here, which is basically just trying to compile a, a timeline for you of new vulnerabilities that have been identified due to the fact that you haven't been patching or there's new software identified vulnerabilities across the tenant that you need to impact and they or they, that you need to remediate, but they show you the original impacted devices and the current ones today as well too. If you're doing different software patches across your devices, something like that. And this will take you into the event timeline section. We'll go into that a little bit further down the line here. You have your remediation activities, which I'll get into, but you also have top vulnerable software and top exposed devices here as well too based off the security controls and recommendations in the particular tenant. So let's go down through each one of these as well too, just to see these in a different view. You have them here on the, the right hand side as well too, but clicking into them usually brings you into this page. So what we have here is just a list of security recommendations. Again, the threat section here is highly important because they'll, they'll tell you if there's active threats um, and threat insights associated with that, like known CVEs and uh, they'll give you that information there. If this is lit up, that means that there's active alerts associated with this security recommendation or weakness. And if you click on this, it brings you into a little panel here, which is giving you an impact score. This again, affects your exposure score in the tenant. 
And then you have some actions that you can take here depending on what this is actually entailing for you. If you want to take action based off of exposure or some of the collective uh, CVEs here that, that are known to this and the weighting as well too. And so you have a couple of actions up top here. You can open up the software page for Windows 10 in this case. You can choose remediation options. And in this case, you can say, I want to open up a ticket in Intune. And this is a good way, like if it's a software update or a Windows 10 update, you can then push this ticket into Intune where somebody who's controlling the deployment rings would have access to that. You can set a priority for this here. You can select a due date and you can add notes here as well too. So let's do another one that I haven't actually pushed in there. And we'll push the ticket into Intune. We'll give it a low priority here. And we'll select a due date of, of next Monday. Go ahead and click on Submit. And it'll give you this messaging up here. You'll receive a confirmation, but then it'll give you a confirmation about the remediation action created. And that's actually in this section here for remediation activities. This is where somebody like the analyst would come in and create this within the uh, portal here or manage it as far as the progress goes. The software update in this case for both of these tickets is what we've done. And then this one is another application configuration change that we've completed in the past. In the endpoint manager admin center here, this is Intune. I just went into endpoint security and security task. And th these are the tasks that are pushed in from ATP. I can refresh here and I'll get that one that I just came, get, came through here. And you can either accept or reject this. And it's telling you here the remediation steps to take as well too, which is really cool. You don't have to figure all this out on your own. It's giving you some, some automated actions. You can either accept or reject this. And you, you know, as you and the user can say, I am taking on this task or any specific notes you want to add to that and put that in as a note. And so then it becomes an active state. And this is again, where you would have a team of people who might be managing this and you want to grab it and assign it to yourself there for being able to go in and remediate within the endpoint manager admin center. So it obviously depends on the size of your organization and what you're doing there, but you'll notice here that it, it maintains this sync between the two admin portals. So I'm back here in the ATP center again, and I just will refresh my page here. And this is still in a pending approval. This might take just a couple more minutes to fully go through, but you'll get it into an active state. And this one's being created or created in Intune as well too. So you can manage it you know, from both places. You can mark it as completed here but technically, if it's a you know a software patch or something like that, you'd be remediating it within Intune. So let me pull this back up and go back to security recommendations. The other things that you can do here that it gives you recommendations on is exceptions. So some of the things that you can do here is justifications, like maybe you're using third-party software to remediate this issue uh, from the known vulnerability that it's recommending here. You have an alternative mitigation than what it's recommending. You just want to mark it there. It's an accepted risk that you're taking, or you want to have a grace period before you do this, and you're just saying, hey, we want to say that this is okay for the next 90 days, and then we're going to handle it after that. So it gives you multiple options to try and solve this. One of the cool things that they do here as well, too, is they show you user impact. Um, as long as it's had enough time to collect the telemetry across all the devices. So you can say like, if you were to go in and do the remediations ac actions that they uh, recommend here, this is how many users it would impact and what the kind of impact it would have as well too. So it's good to have the description so you fully understand the risk associated and you also understand user impact, that's very huge when you're thinking about just flipping on changes and not, not fully grasping what the users will see or how it might interrupt their workflows. The other way you can do this is you can open up the software page here and it brings up software vulnerabilities for this. And I'll get to this in a minute here. But the 
main thing here is back on remediations, you can see any exceptions you've made. If you kind of want to go back and say, oh, maybe we shouldn't be making that exception anymore, and you have a whole audit trail of being able to see that. The next thing here is that software inventory. So it's doing a scan of your network to see all the software that's on the network and again giving you weaknesses, known CVEs associated with that, and known threats and exposed devices. So you can click on one of these and it'll pull up, you know, just a really basic level page um, showing you, you know, how many how many devices it's installed on um, and some of the exploits available and all of that. You can open up the software page here and you can see some security recommendations associated with this particular software, updating Windows 10, disable or installing downloaded software with invalid signatures, these types of things here. And they present you with the known CVEs and when those CVEs were published and when they were updated. So you can really go down a rabbit hole here to understand scope of impact and understand if it's something that you want to prioritize. So the big thing with TVM is you're getting all this metadata that you can then go out and assign to other people to investigate or perform actions on like software updates or OS updates, things like that. Um, but you also you obviously need to understand scope, um, such as the, the version distribution across the devices that you have here and also the missing security updates and the number of devices it was missed on. So this gives you a lot of, of good metadata again uh, to perform certain actions. But the biggest thing you also want to take in consideration the, the severity of the vulnerability here as well too. If they're in a high status or if they're in critical, these are obviously ones that you would want to prioritize higher than others. And again, you're really looking to reduce your exposure score by taking the recommendations that Microsoft's consuming across all of your endpoints and doing those first because they have the highest impact to the devices in your entire environment. So, you know, these two would be ones I would want to address because this one obviously is, is addressing 149 known CVs. So, you know, this is a good way for you to, to then come in proactively and triage this. You also have a weaknesses page as well here too, which is basically just accumulating all the CVEs that are, are known, especially related to your environment and, and the devices that would be exposed to this. You're no means gonna cover 118,000 vulnerabilities from the, the CVEs, but you can know if they are you know active threats that would cause certain actions that need to be taken within your organization. And then the event timeline, we kind of went over briefly in the beginning, but basically just triaging certain uh, events that occurred and how they compiled. And if it's um, basically a, a gap analysis, you could think of it as we're saying, hey, this was the originally impacted. Now this is how it's currently impacted. So this could give you a good idea if there's somebody moving laterally throughout your network or if there's, there's a growing problem just naturally with other users installing an older version of the software that has vulnerabilities or something like that that you can see growing that you may not be privy to on the outset um, because they're they're controlling that internally. So definitely a lot going on here um, for the security administrator. So you know the biggest thing here is is multi-tenant considerations and the amount of time that you would need to be spending in each one of these tenants. I think that's the biggest constraint. Obviously that makes this solution a little bit better for larger MSPs who have more of a, a deeper line set of security administrators and analysts that can come in and, and do this across the customers periodically. Obviously, the main thing is to triage all of your alerts across all customers to your PSA tool, and I'll be showing that in later videos. But uh, you also want to be proactive with specific software installed in your clientele that'll be different across each customer and new threats that come up that uh, may be different across environments because of the subset of machines that you have. So that's everything I wanted to show you in this video. If you do have any questions on threat and vulnerability management, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, please like or subscribe if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.